A condenser is an apparatus or item of equipment used to condense change the physical state of a substance from its gaseous to its liquid state. In the laboratory, condensers are generally used in procedures involving organic liquids brought into the gaseous state through heating, with or without lowering the pressure applying vacuum. Though applications in inorganic and other chemistry areas exist. While condensers can be applied at various scales, in the research, training, or discovery laboratory, one most often uses glassware designed to pass a vapor flow over an adjacent cooled chamber. In simplest form, such a condenser consists of a single glass tube with outside air providing cooling. A further simple form, the Liebig type of condenser, involves concentric glass tubes, an inner one through which the hot gases pass, and an outer, ported, chamber through which a cooling fluid passes, to reduce the gas temperature in the inner, to afford the condensation. Depending on the application, chemical components being separated, and the required operating temperature and the scale of the process from very few microliters to process scales involving many liters, different types of condensers and means of cooling are used. Alongside the temperature differential and heat capacities of the cooling fluids such as air, water, aqueous organic cosolvents, the size of the cooling surface and the way in which gas vapor and condensing liquid states come into contact are critical in the choice or design of a condenser system. Since at least the 19th century, scientists have sought creative designs to maximize the surface area of vapor-liquid contact and heat exchange. Many types of laboratory condensers—simpler Liebig and Allen, coiled gram types, simple and dimrith types of cold finger condensers, etc now common, have evolved to meet the practical need of larger cooling surfaces and controlled boiling and condensation in various procedures involving distillation, and a further very wide array of materials for packing simpler condensers to increase surface area such as glass, ceramic, and metal beads, rings, wool have been studied and applied. Likewise, the configurations of laboratory apparatus involving condensers are many and varied, to cover low and high boiling solvents, simple and complex separations, etc. Several common process types based on the change of physical state provided by condensers can easily be described, including simple evaporations or solvent stripping the bulk removal of all volatiles to leave behind concentrated solutes present in the original solution being evaporated, reflux operations where the aim is to contain all volatiles while providing a constant process temperature established by the boiling point of the solvent system being used, and separation, distillation operations where high theoretical plates provide for selective delivery of one or more volatile components of a complex mixture in a controlled fashion. The direction of vapor and condensate flows in the laboratory condenser chosen for each of these may vary e.g., being countercurrent in reflux procedures, and concurrent in many simple distillation procedures, as do the optimal flow direction for the cooling fluid, etc. In all processes, condenser selection – design requires that the heat of entering vapor never overwhelm the condenser and cooling mechanism, as well, the thermal gradients and material flows established during the gas-liquid transition are critical aspects, so that as processes increase in scale from laboratory to pilot plant and beyond, the design of condenser systems becomes a precise engineering science. Topic. Operation A condenser is a piece of apparatus or equipment that can be used to condense, that is, to change the physical state of a substance from its gaseous to its liquid state. In the laboratory, it is generally used in procedures done with liquids brought into gaseous state through heating or application of vacuum, lowered pressure, often a mixture with water or other substances. 
Condensers can be applied at various scales, from micro scale, very few microliters, to process scale, many liters, using laboratory glassware and occasionally metalware that accomplishes the cooling of the vapor generated by boiling through heating or application of vacuum. In simplest form, a condenser can consist of a single tube of glass or metal, where the flow of outside air produces the cooling. In a further simple form, condensers consist of concentric glass tubes, with the tube through which the hot gases begin to pass running the length of the apparatus. The second tube defines an outer chamber through which air, water, or other cooling fluids can pass to reduce the temperature of the gases to afford the condensation. Hence, the outer tube or as designs become more complex, outer cooling chamber has an inlet and an outlet to allow the cooling fluid to enter and exit. The specific requirement that components in the solution being fractionated divided into component fractions have differing boiling points, and the varying demands of heat exchange for the various chemical processes using condensers have led to design of very wide varieties of types, with a general design theme being creative ways in which the surface area for vapor-liquid interaction and heat exchange can be increased, which leads to an increased number of theoretical plates, a metric related to an apparatus efficiency in separating components with smaller differences in boiling point, and ways in which to control common difficulties experienced in real distillations such as flooding and channeling see below the combination of these has taken the simple condenser concept through simple changes e.g. addition in all in type condensers of bubbles or undulations to the inner straight vapor tube of the simple Liebig design so that diethyl ether bp 35 degrees celsius could be accommodated onto many unique condenser configurations types of packings of the vapor space and applied cooling media and mechanisms see below in this array of designs, the direction of vapor and condensate flows depends on the specific application e.g., being countercurrent in reflux procedures, and concurrent in many simpler distillation procedures, the same is true with regard to the optimal flow direction for the cooling fluid air, water, aqueous ethylene glycol co-solutions, etc. relative to the direction of vapor flow. Note, while the traditional coolants, air and chilled tap water, have often been used without recirculation that is, allowed to exit to atmosphere or drain, respectively, larger scale operations and municipal and other regulations make engineered recirculation necessary, and it is always required for special cooling liquids, such as low temperature alcohols and co-solutions. Designing and maintaining systems and processes using condensers requires that the heat of the entering vapor never overwhelm the ability of the chosen condenser and cooling mechanism, as well, the thermal gradients and material flows established are critical aspects, and as processes scale from laboratory to pilot plant and beyond, the design of condenser systems becomes a precise engineering science. Use of condensers in chemical procedures—when not performed at fixed, lowered pressure by careful vacuum control—inevitably involves transiently fluctuating pressures within the apparatus, so that isolating the apparatus while allowing it to be an open rather than sealed system becomes a practical issue. This is particularly true, when chemical reactions are performed that are air or moisture sensitive. If the reaction or process using condensers cannot be left open to atmosphere, its isolation is accomplished in simplest fashion via drying tubes an attached tube packed with desiccant or other specially packed scavenging tubes, that allows gases to pass, and so pressure equalization, but prevents entry of substances deleterious to the ongoing chemistry. Alternatively, the apparatus can be vented through a bubbler that prevents entry of laboratory atmosphere either by allowing the internal volume to push and pull against a volume of resisting liquid e.g., mineral or silicone oil, or by keeping a positive pressure of an inert blanketing gas such as nitrogen or argon that vents through a similar volume of liquid. 
Attachment of such during tubes and bubblers can be direct, or indirect via gas, vacuum lines and manifolds. Practically, in modern milliliter to liter scale laboratory operations involving condensers, pieces of apparatus are often held together tightly by complementary, tapered inner and outer joints ground to produce very tight fits augmented as necessary by PTFE rings or sleeves, or uniquely formulated greases or waxes. Increasingly, other means of joint glass, such as threaded fittings with adapters, are used, some of which are also also used across the range of process scales. Topic: Examples of processes. Condensers are often used in reflux, where the hot solvent vapors of a liquid being heated are cooled and allowed to drip back. This reduces the loss of solvent, allowing the mixture to be heated for extended periods. Condensers are used in distillation to cool the hot vapors, condensing them into liquid for separate collection. For fractional distillation, an air or vigro condenser is usually used to slow the rate at which the hot vapors rise, giving a better separation between the different components in the distillate. For microscale distillation, the apparatus includes the pot, and the condenser fused into one piece, which reduces the holdup volume, and obviates the need for ground glass joints preventing contamination by grease and precluding leaks. <laughs> <laughs> Air-cooled types The simplest sort of condenser consists of a single tube wherein the heat of the vapor is conducted to the glass wall, which is only cooled by air. Such air condensers are often used for condensation of high boiling liquids for distillations at high temperatures, well above 100 degrees Celsius, where columns can be used with or without packing. See below. Historically, the retort appearing in illustrations of the practice of alchemists is an apparatus that is essentially an unpacked air condenser. Liebig condensers are often used as air condensers, with air circulated rather than a liquid coolant see next section. A Vigro column, named after the French glass blower Henri Vigro (1869–1951), is a type of air condenser in which a glass blower has modified the simple tube to include an abundance of downward-pointing indentations, thus dramatically increasing the surface area per unit length of the condenser. The Vigro column was invented in 1904. Such columns are often used to add the theoretical plates required in fractional distillation, and present added cost for their manufacture, which can include designs with or without an outer glass cylinder jacket, open to air or allowing fluid circulation, or, to aid in insulation, an outer vacuum jacket. A Snyder column is an extremely effective air-cooled column used in selected fractional distillations. It is a single glass tube with a series of circular indentations or restrictions in the walls of the cylinder often three or six in which rest, inverted, the same number of roughly tear-shaped, hollow, sealed glass stoppers, above each point where an inverted tear-shaped stopper rests, the cylinder has further Vigro-type indentations, in this case serving to limit how high the glass stopper can be raised by vapor flow above its resting place, where where, when not raised, it seals the circular opening created by the circular indentation. These floating glass stoppers act as check valves, closing and opening with vapor flow, and enhancing vapor condensate mixing. A standard application of Snyder columns, is as the condenser and fractionation column above a Caderna Danish concentrator, used to efficiently separate a low boiling extraction solvent such as methylene chloride from volatile but higher boiling extract components e.g., after the extraction of organic contaminants in soil. 
A further air condenser is the Widmer Column, developed as a doctoral research project by student Gustav Widmer at ETH Zurich in the early 1920s, a complex type of air condenser combining Golodets type concentric tubes and the Dufton type glass rod and wound spiral at its center. See image. Topic: <laughs> Fluid cooled types. Topic: <laughs> Liebig condenser. The condenser known as the Liebig type, a most basic circulating fluid cooled design, was invented by several investigators working independently. However, the earliest laboratory condenser was invented in 1771 by the Swedish German chemist Christian Weigel. Weigel's condenser consisted of two coaxial tin tubes, which were joined at their lower ends and open at their upper ends. Cold water entered, via an inlet, the lower end of this jacket and spilled out of the jacket's open upper end. A glass tube carrying vapors from a distillation flask passed through the inner tin tube, not in contact with the cooling water. Weigel subsequently replaced the inner tin tube with a glass tube, and he devised a clamp to hold the condenser. In 1791, the German chemist Johann Friedrich August Gotteling (1753–1809), who was a former student of Weigel, sealed both ends of Weigel's condenser. The German chemist Justus Liebig (1803–1873) eliminated the inner wall of Weigel's condenser, placing, in direct contact with the jacket's cooling water, the glass tube carrying vapors from the distillation flask. He also replaced with glass the outer metal wall of Weigel's condenser and he used rubber hoses instead of metal tubes to convey water to and from the condenser the design popularized by Liebig thus consisted of an inner straight tube surrounded by an outer straight tube with the outer tube having ports for fluid inflow and outflow and with the two tubes sealed in some fashion at the ends eventually by a blown glass ring seal its simplicity made it convenient to construct and inexpensive to manufacture. The higher heat capacity of the circulating water versus air allowed for maintaining near to constant temperature in the condenser, and so the Liebig type proved to be the more efficient condenser, capable of condensing liquid from a much greater flow of incoming vapor, and therefore replaced retorts and air condensers. An added benefit of the simplicity of the straight inner tube design of this condenser type is that it can be «packed» with materials that increase the surface area and so the number of theoretical plates of the distillation column, see section below, e.g., plastic, ceramic, and metal beads, rings, wool, etc. See fractional distillation. Topic: West condenser. A variant of the Liebig condenser having a more slender design with cone and socket. The fused-on narrower coolant jacket may render more efficient cooling with respect to coolant consumption. Topic: Allen condenser. The Allen condenser or bulb condenser, or simply reflux condenser, is named after Felix Richard Allen 1854-1915. The Allen condenser consists of a long glass tube with a water jacket. A series of bulbs on the tube increases the surface area upon which the vapor constituents may condense. Ideally suited for laboratory scale refluxing. Topic: <inaudible> Davies condenser. A Davies condenser, also known as a double surface condenser, is similar to the Liebig condenser, but with three concentric glass tubes instead of two. 
The coolant circulates in both the outer jacket and the central tube. This increases the cooling surface, so that the condenser can be shorter than an equivalent Liebig condenser. <laughs> Gram condenser A gram condenser, also called grams or inland revenue condenser, has a coolant jacketed spiral coil running the length of the condenser serving as the vapor condensate path. This is not to be confused with the coil condenser. The coiled condenser tubes inside will provide more surface area for cooling and for this reason it is most favorable to use but the drawback of this condenser is that as the vapors get condensed, it tends to move them up in the tube to evaporate which will also lead to the flooding of solution mixture. Topic. Coil condenser. A coil condenser is essentially a gram condenser with an inverted coolant vapor configuration. It has a spiral coil running the length of the condenser through which coolant flows, and this coolant coil is jacketed by the vapor condensate path. Topic: Dimrith condenser. A Dimrith condenser, named after Otto Dimrith, is somewhat similar to the coil condenser. It has an internal double spiral through which coolant flows such that the coolant inlet and outlet are both at the top. The vapors travel through the jacket from bottom to top. Dimrith condensers are more effective than conventional coil condensers. They are often found in rotary evaporators. Topic. Spiral condenser A spiral condenser has a spiral condensing tube with both inlet and outlet connections at top, on same side. See Dimrith condenser. Topic. Friedrichs condenser A Friedrichs condenser, sometimes incorrectly referred to as Friedrichs condenser, a spiraled finger condenser, was invented by Fritz Walter Paul Friedrichs, who published a design for this type of condenser in 1912. It consists of a large, spiraled internal cold finger type capillary tube disposed within a wide cylindrical housing. Coolant flows through the internal cold finger. Accordingly, vapors rising up through the housing must pass along the spiraled path. Topic: <laughs> Packing of condensers. During a fractional distillation in the laboratory or chemical plant, simple straight tubes can be packed with materials to increase surface area, and therefore the number of theoretical plates. In the same manner, the surface areas of simple laboratory glass condensers such as the Liebig can be filled to improve performance. The same standard distillation packing materials can be used. Glass beads, rings, or helices such as Fenske rings, porcelain rashig or lessing rings, or metal packings of aluminum, copper, nickel, and stainless steel of most of the preceding shapes such as metal lessing and Fenske types. Glass packings have as a further benefit their chemical inertness relevant to distillations of reactive chemicals like acid chlorides, while metal packings are easier to tamp to. Ensure uniform packing. Metal packing types can extend to wire packings of nichrome and inconel, akin to Podbilniak columns, to stainless steel gauze, Dixon rings, and indeed to any of the various special packing methods used in distillation, e.g., Hempel, Todd, and Stedman packing methods. For instance, wire packed columns of the Podbilniak type function by providing large surface areas for vapor liquid interaction with capillary like spaces that vary evenly spread the condensed liquid, such that channeling and flooding in the column are minimized. 
and giving, in one specific example, added theoretical plate counts of 1 to 2 per 5 cm of packed length. Alternative coolants Solid dry ice or an acetone – dry ice mixture can be used in a cold finger as a coolant, which allows cooling of the vapor stream to below 0 degrees Celsius, a matter critical in the condensation of low boiling liquids such as dimethyl ether, B, P, minus 23.6 degrees Celsius. Likewise, other chilled liquids can be circulated through typical water cooled condensers. Circulating coolants include water ethylene glycol cosolvents, antifreeze solutions, and pure liquids such as ethanol, in either case pumped in a closed loop recycling fashion from a chiller circulator under thermostatic control. Topic further reading Heinz G. O. Becker, Werner Berger, Gunter Domschke, et al., 2009, Organicum, Organisch Chemisches Grundpraktikum 23rd German EDN, Kompel. Rev. Updated, Weinheim, Wiley VCH, ISBN 3-527-32292-2, c. 1, accessed 25 February 2015. Heinz G. O. Becker, Werner Berger, Gunter Domschke, Egan Fanghanel, Jürgen Faust, Mechthild Fischer, Frithjof Jens, Karl Gewald, Reiner Gluck, Roland Mayer, Klaus Müller, Dietrich Pavel, Hermann Schmidt, Karl Schalberg, Klaus Schwetlich, Erika Seiler and Gunter Zeppefeld, 1973, Organicum, Practical Handbook of Organic Chemistry, 1st English ed., P. A. Ongley, ed., B. J. Hazard, Transel, C.F. 5th German E.D.N., 1965, Reading, Mass., Addison Wesley, ISBN 0-201055-04-X, C. 2, accessed 25 February 2015. Armorigo, W.L.F., Chai, Christina 2012. Purification of Laboratory Chemicals 7th ed. Oxford, UK, Butterworth Heinemann. pp. 8-14. ISBN 978-0-12-382162-1. Coker, A. Kayade, Ludwig, Ernest E. 2010. Distillation Chapter 10 and Packed Towers Chapter 14. Ludwig's Applied Process Design for Chemical and Petrochemical Plants, Volume 2, Distillation, Packed Towers, Petroleum Fractionation, Gas Processing and Dehydration 4th ed. New York, Elsevier Gulf Professional Publishing. ISBN 978-0-08-094209-4, pp 1-268 ch. 10, 679-686 ch. 10 refs, 483-678 ch. 14, 687-690 ch. 14 refs, 691-696 Biblio. Leonard, John, Ligo, Barry, Proctor, Gary Advanced Practical Organic Chemistry 2nd ed. Boca Raton, FL, CRC Press. ISBN 978-0-7487-4071-0. Vogel, A. I., Tatchell, A. R. Vogel's Textbook of Practical Organic Chemistry 5th ed. Longman or Prentice Hall. ISBN 978-0-582-46236-6, or 4th edition. Tietz, Lutz F., Eicher, Theophil 1986. Reactions and Syntheses in the Organic Chemistry Laboratory 1st ed. University Science Books. ISBN 978-0-935702-50-7. Shriver, D. F., Dresden, M. A. The Manipulation of Air-Sensitive Compounds. New York, John Wiley & Sons. 
ISBN 978-0-471-86773-9. Krell, Eric Handbook of Laboratory Distillation, with an introduction into the pilot plant distillation. Techniques and Instrumentation in Analytical Chemistry 2nd ed. Amsterdam, Elsevier. ISBN 978-0-444-99723-4. Stage, F. Die Kalanen zur Laboratoriumsdestillation. Eine Übersicht über den Entwicklungsstand der Kalanen zur Destillation im Laboratorium. Angewandt Chemie. 19 7, 175 183. doi 10.1002, Chirides, LP. 1940. Fumarol chloride. Organic synthesis, 2051. Doi ten point one five two two seven orgson point zero two zero point zero zero five one Pasto Daniel J Johnson Carl R nineteen seventy nine Laboratory text for organic chemistry a source book of chemical and physical techniques Englewood Cliffs N J Prentice Hall ISBN 978-0-13-521302-5 Gallery of further condenser types <laughs> Gallery of further condenser applications See also Condenser, heat transfer <laughs>